Good morning, and welcome to Oris Medical's conference call. On today's call are Thomas Meyer, Oris Medical's Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, and Elmar Sherley, Oris Medical's Chief Financial Officer, who will present the company's financial results for the first half of 2020 and provide a business update. The accompanying slides can be found on our website in the Investors section. Earlier today, Oris Medical issued a news release with the first half 2020 financial results, as well as a business update. The release is available on the company's website, orismedical.com, and filed with the SEC. During today's call, we will be making forward-looking statements within the meaning of the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These include statements that address future operating, financial, or business performance, or our strategies or expectations. Forward-looking statements are based on management's current expectations and beliefs, and involve significant risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results, developments, and business decisions to differ materially from those contemplated by these statements. These risks and uncertainties include, but are not limited to, the timing and conduct of our clinical trials, the clinical utility of our product candidates, the timing or likelihood of regulatory filings and approvals, our intellectual property position, and our financial position, as well as those described in the risk factors section in our annual report on Form 20F and future filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. In addition, any forward-looking statements represent our views only as of today and should not be relied upon as representing our views as of any subsequent date. While we may elect to update these forward-looking statements at some point in the future, we specifically disclaim any obligation to do so even if our views change. With that, I'll hand the call over to Thomas Meyer. Thank you, Elaine. Hello, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join Oris Medical's first half 2020 earnings and business update call. On the call, I will provide an update on our various development projects, as well as an overview of recent corporate developments. Following my update, our CFO, Elmar Shirley, will provide an overview of our first half financials. Finally, I will discuss key milestones for 2020 and leading into 2021. We will then open the call for any questions. In the past few months, we continue to make significant progress with our clinical stage intranasal beta histine program, announcing positive results in our two main projects, AM125 and AM201. In terms of some key highlights, we announced that we will be advancing our phase two trial with AM125 for acute vertigo following the positive interim data that we recently announced. And we reported positive outcomes in our phase 1B trial with AM201 for the reduction of antipsychotic induced weight gain. We are also happy to report that the beta histine administered intranasally showed good safety and tolerability in both programs. I'll discuss the exciting data from these trials shortly. In addition to our beta histine programs, we recently established a new program, AM301, a drug-free nasal spray for protection against airborne pathogens and allergens. This spray has the potential to protect against a wide variety of pathogens and allergens And we are pleased to report that we have already seen positive indications in a SARS-CoV-2 in vitro assay. We'll be conducting more studies throughout the rest of the year. Finally, from an operational and financial standpoint, we continue to reduce our operating expenditures and cash burn rate. I'm pleased to say that we managed to align our spending with the temporarily reduced activity levels in our key clinical trial during the main COVID-19 lockdown phase in Europe. On the other hand, we used that lockdown to come up with some fresh ideas on how to self-protect against airborne pathogens and allergens, leading to the establishment of a new subsidiary, Altamira Medica, which is dedicated solely to the development of AM301. We are pleased to have secured a convertible loan in order to kick off AM01's development. Lastly, we recently initiated a strategic review to explore, review, and evaluate 
a broad range of potential strategic alternatives for the company with the aim of unlocking the potential of our various assets. I will discuss this in a bit more detail following the program updates. Moving to slide three, I will now provide an update on each of our Bethesda development projects. On to slide four. I will start the program update with AM125, intranasal beta for the treatment of acute vertigo. As a reminder, oral beta is the standard of care treatment for vertigo in many countries around the world, but its therapeutic potential is limited due to its low bioavailability. AM125 is currently being assessed in our Travers Phase II trial, which is conducted in several European countries and hopefully soon also in Canada and Australia. The trial is to recruit 118 patients suffering from acute vertigo following certain types of neurosurgery. In the trial, we treat patients three times daily for four weeks with AM125 or placebo. The objective is to allow patients to regain control of their balance sooner and to improve their quality of life. The primary endpoints were defined as improvement in how long patients maintain balance in the tandem Romberg and standing on foam tests from baseline to 14 days post-surgery. We just finished part A of the trial, which served for those findings and are currently enrolling patients for open-label treatment with oral beta esteem to generate additional reference data. The trial will conclude with Part B. On to slide five. Part A of the trial demonstrated a dose-dependent improvement in balance, as well as good safety and tolerability of ascending doses of AM125. At the highest dose of 20 milligram, AM125 treated patients improved their performance on the tandem Romberg and the standing on foam balance tests. You see some pictures of those tests on the slide. On average, 1.9 to 2.4 times more than placebo treated patients. So that's six versus 3.1 seconds and 10.5 versus 4.3 seconds. So at the beginning at baseline, these patients are unable to walk or stand in the vast majority of cases. In contrast to placebo, the improvement from baseline was statistically significant for AM125, 20 milligram in the tandem Romberg test with a p-value of 0.02, and for all active dose groups in the standing on foam test with p-values ranging between less than 0.01 and less than 0.05. These positive results were supported by similar improvements in additional efficacy measures, including additional objective as well as clinician and patient reported outcomes. In terms of next steps, we will be testing the 10 and 20 milligram doses of AM125 against placebo in 72 patients in part B of the trial. The improvement in the standing on foam test to day 14 will remain the primary efficacy endpoint. The improvement in the more challenging tandem Romberg test will be assessed as key secondary endpoint at day 45. We are aiming to complete enrollment by the end of Q1 2021, provided that there are no new COVID-19 restrictions on enrollment. On to slide six and AM201. A few months before the positive interim results with AM125, we reported positive outcomes already from our second intranasal bed in project, AM201. With this project, we are seeking to prevent major side effects of second generation antipsychotics, such as olanzapine, in particular weight gain and somnolence. These side effects arise from the antagonistic effect of the antipsychotic drugs at histamine 1 receptors in the brain. It's well known that histamine plays a key role in the brain's regulation of food intake and wakefulness. The phase 1b trial demonstrated good safety and tolerability of ascending doses of AM201 as well as a dose-dependent reduction in weight gain 
in healthy volunteers treated with oral olanzapine at 10 milligrams for four weeks. At the highest AM21 dose of 30 milligram, the mean weight gain from baseline to the end of the treatment period was 2.8 kilograms compared against 3.7 kilograms in control subjects. The primary efficacy endpoint of mean reduction in weight gain was 0.9 kilogram and statistically significant with a p-value of less than 0.02. In the next step, following additional preclinical testing, the company intends to file for an IND in 2021. Moving to slide seven. I will now discuss our newly established program, AIM-01, for protection against airborne pathogens and allergens. On to slide eight. Last week, we announced the initiation of a new development program where we are aiming to develop a drug-free nasal spray for personal protection against airborne pathogens and allergens. The current worldwide pandemic has further highlighted the risks associated with airborne pathogens. The nose is the main port of entry for airborne viruses and bacteria. On normal conditions, human beings take in approximately 90% of air through their noses. Another risk is exposure to allergens, such as those from pollen, animal hair, or house dust mites, which affect many people. Close to 8% of the adult U.S. population and 9% of children suffer from allergic rhinitis. The nasal mucosa is the body's first line of defense as it helps to clear particles from the nose by discharge into the pharynx and elimination through the gastrointestinal tract. AM301 is a gel which works by forming a protective layer on the nasal mucosa, acting as a physical barrier against airborne pathogens and allergens. The thin protective film formed by AM301 helps to prevent the contact of such pathogens and allergens with cells. In addition, the composition serves to trap or bind such particles and help with their discharge. Together, this is designed to reduce the risk of infection and promote alleviation of allergic symptoms. With 301, we are seeking to provide a simple and effective means for personal protection in settings or places with increased risk of exposure to airborne pathogens, such as public transportation, flights, cruises, sport events, concerts, university lectures. Unlike our bad ASD nasal sprays also on the development, AM301 does not contain any active substance. We believe that it will be regulated, marketed as an over-the-counter medical device. As we move to slide nine, I'll run through our development plan for this new product. A key feature of AM301's development will be the use of well-established and safe components and of a classic nasal pump spray for the gel's delivery in order to achieve optimum safety and reduce development risks. We are seeing a high medical need for this type of product and are therefore eager to move the product expeditiously forward. We have already done some efficacy testing and seen positive protective effects with AM301's key component in a SARS coronavirus 2 assay. In this experiment, the substance was added in various concentrations, the suspension of the virus for various time periods. Virus particles were then collected from the suspension and transferred onto cell cultures for incubation, allowing for viral replication and infection of adjacent cells. The experiment showed that after only five minutes of contact between AMCO1's key component and the virus suspension, the viral infectious load was reduced by up to 99%. This is very encouraging. We are currently preparing further performance tests involving other pathogens and allergens and standard biocompatibility tests. We expect to conduct two relatively short clinical trials. We plan to advance and complete the development of AM301 through our new Altamira medical subsidiary. We are targeting submission of regulatory applications to the US Food and Drug Administration and regulatory authorities in other jurisdictions in 2021. 
We are currently mapping out the required regulatory pathways and assessing the choice of predicate devices. Last but not least, we have already filed a provisional patent application. While we are still in the early stages of this development program, I'm very excited by AM301's potential and by the pace at which the program is moving. We are committed to getting a product to market as soon as possible, and I look forward to providing updates as we continue to work towards this goal. Moving to slide 10, I will now provide some corporate updates. And on to slide 11. So the company's board of directors has started a process to explore, review, and evaluate a broad range of potential strategic alternatives. These alternatives include, but are not limited, to the partnering of its various clinical and preclinical programs or a sale or merger of the company in an effort to unlock the potential of those assets and maximize shareholder value. With four clinical stage programs and several preclinical projects, Oris Medical has a broad pipeline in therapeutic areas with high unmet medical need. It is our mission to progress these innovative products through development and make them available to the many people worldwide who are suffering from inner ear disorders or who are seeking protection against antipsychotic-induced weight gain or who seek protection from airborne pathogens or allergens. At the same time, we look to create value to our shareholders while securing the funding for our development programs. We expect that the strategic review process will facilitate our efforts to achieve these goals. At this point, there can be no assurance the company's strategic review will result in the completion of any particular course of action. There is no defined timeline for completion of the review process, and the company does not intend to comment further unless a specific initiative is approved by the Board of Directors. The review process is concluded, or it is otherwise determined that other disclosure is appropriate. In addition, as mentioned, we are excited to have recently established Altamira Medica, a subsidiary of Oris Medical, entirely focused on the development of AM301. Altamira is currently a 100% subsidiary of Oris Medical Holding Limited. Going forward, the company expects its ownership in Altamira to decrease as financial or strategic investors will be invited to join as shareholders as additional financing will be required. In the first transaction, 5T Capital Holding Limited, a Swiss long-only investment management firm, provided a convertible loan to Altamira. The loan has a principal amount of 1.5 million Swiss francs, and under the terms of the agreement, 5T will have the right to convert the loan or parts thereof into common shares of either Altamira or its medical holding limited, subject to additional provisions and certain restrictions. Altamira will be looking to collaborate with one or more third parties in order to successfully commercialize the AM01 product. I would now like to hand the call over to our Chief Financial Officer, El Marcelli, to run through our first half 2020 financial results. Thank you, Thomas. Before reviewing our financial results for the first half of 2020, I would like to note that the financial statements are presented in Swiss francs. To help you with interpreting the financials, please consider that one Swiss franc is the equivalent of about 1.1 US dollars. Now moving to slide 13. The first half of 2020 saw a reduction in net loss to 2.7 million Swiss francs or 0.58 Swiss francs per share from 3.6 million Swiss francs or 1.66 Swiss francs per share in the first half of 2019. We therefore continued to reduce operating expenditures and the cash burn rate. The main factors contributing to the decrease in 2020 were a reduction in research and development expenses from 1.3 million Swiss francs in the first half of 2019 to 0.9 million Swiss francs in the first half of 2020, primarily due to lower startup costs for clinical trials and lower headcount. <laughs> Sorry and a reduction in general and administrative expenses 
from 2.8 million Swiss francs in the first half of 2019 to 1.5 million Swiss francs in the first half of 2020. Administration expenditures in 2019 had included substantial external costs related to the company's redomestication to Bermuda. Please note that in the first half of 2020, we capitalized direct costs related to our AM 125 program in accordance with International Accounting Standard 38 for a total amount of 0.7 million Swiss francs compared to 1.6 million Swiss francs for the six months ended June 30, 2019. Now on to slide 14. Cash and cash equivalents at June 30, 2020 were substantially lower than usual due to the reduction in the par value per common share from 0.4 to 0.01 Swiss francs. Also, the reduction itself was cash neutral. It prevented us temporarily from raising equity and was completely only on June 30, 2020. Since then, we have raised about 2.1 million US dollars in gross proceeds from the issuance of stock under the equity line with LPC and through our at the market program. In addition, we obtained 1.5 million Swiss francs through the convertible loan to Altamira Medica. We expect our total cash needs in 2020, including project AM301, to be in the range of 7.0 to 8.5 million Swiss francs for expected total operating expenses of 4.5 to 5.5 million Swiss francs and expected capitalized research and development expenses of 2.5 to 3.0 million Swiss francs. These cash needs are below our earlier guidance. So far, we have used about 11% of the maximum amounts available under each the ATM program and equity line of 25 and $10 million respectively. With that, I would like to turn the call back to Thomas. Thank you, Elmar. Concluding on slide 16, we have had a very productive 2020 so far with key data readouts and the establishment of a new development program. We have several key project milestones in the upcoming quarters that I'd like to highlight. The start of part B of our phase two trial was AM125. The receipt of additional in vitro data with AM301 following this in vitro data, the generation of clinical data with AM301, the filing of an IND for intranasal beta-histine, the completion of recruitment in Part B of our AM125 Phase two trial. In addition, we will obviously have a key focus on the strategic review. I'm proud of the immense amount of work our team has put into our exciting development programs, especially in light of the COVID-19 related challenges. I believe what we are doing will be life-changing for very important patient populations. I look forward to sharing intermittent updates as we continue to make progress. With that, I would like now to turn the call back to the operator who will open the line for questions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one on your telephone and wait for the operator to get your first and last name. Once again, please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. We do have one question now, and it comes from the line of Max Jacobs from Edison Group. Please ask your question. Hi guys, uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, so first I just wanted to ask about AM301, um, like how, how long um, would that gel coating last? Was it, is it just meant for like short term use? Hi Max. Um, well, this is a, a obviously a, a very important question. So as we know, uh, within the nose, you have uh, those uh, tiny little cilia uh, that uh, constantly remove uh, objects, particles uh, from the nose. And so that's a fairly quick process. Now, one of the particularities here of this um, gel formulation is uh, that it's actually quite sticky. So it's a thin film 
but uh, it's designed um, to stay, to uh, remain here uh, for an extended period of time. So uh, we are estimating that it will be um, up to a few hours, but uh, we will need uh, to uh, perform here some additional um, experiments. But in any case, um, it, it, it's definitely more than uh, than the, let's say, natural residence time uh, within the NOx. Okay, great. And then, um, you know, since you, you uh, are targeting the uh, over-the-counter pathway, I was just wondering if you have any idea as to what um, the price might be. Well, we do have some uh, um, ideas about uh, the potential pricing. I think we want to make this uh, clearly an affordable product. Um, on the other hand, it's a little bit uh, premature here to already uh, talk about the pricing. I mean, uh, it is a, uh, it's a consumer health product, uh, so it's a classic nasal spray. And uh, here uh, with one spray, um, you may have uh, enough uh, supplies here to uh, uh, cover, for example, uh, 14 days or uh, one month or something like that. But uh, that's still under consideration, and, uh, well, we expect in any case that it will become uh, something that is uh, affordable and effective and safe. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, it, it, it doesn't um, doesn't interfere with, I mean, it, it will still be breathable through the nose. Like there, it, you wouldn't expect much discomfort from the use of this gel. Absolutely. I mean, this is one of the key requirements uh, here. And as I said, uh, this is a, a very thin film uh, that is established. And uh, so, therefore, uh, breathing, um, this, this should be absolutely normal. I mean, this is one of the advantages, obviously. We know that uh, some people um, are in, unable to uh, wear uh, face masks uh, for various reasons. Uh, some people um, uh, don't like wearing masks. So in a sense, uh, what we uh, want to achieve here is really um, reinforce the first line of defense of the nasal mucosa by uh, adding here a protective layer and, in addition, um, also binding or trapping um, these, these particles and helping to remove them. So it's a kind of a dual action. Okay, great. And then um, just moving to the, uh, the Phase two Traverse trial data, I was wondering if you could just discuss, like, the clinical significance of um, I guess it was like a little more than a six-second benefit on the stand, standing on foam test and uh, then, you know, a three-second benefit on the tandem Romberg. Yes. Um, okay. So we um, have here a continuous improvement um, as uh, people start treatment um, over the four weeks of treatment, and then there is a, a follow-up period of two weeks without any treatment. And so there is a recovery in the placebo group, and here the aim with uh, AM125 is obviously to accelerate this uh, recovery process, so to get uh, people um, faster back on their feet, literally. And uh, what we can see here is that, uh, okay, the placebo did not differ significantly uh, from zero, the improvement. With the active groups, we already um, could see uh, some nice um, differentiation. It's also um, very important to see that not only these two tests, but additional tests also confirm, support these results, and I'm talking about other objective measures. I'm talking also about subjective feedback uh, from uh, patients. So we also measured um, on a visual analog scale um, the rating of, of their um, health, and it all points in the same direction. So in the end, uh, what we will need to show, demonstrate here with this product is obviously, okay, we have a significant improvement in the recovery and we have also um, this recovery, this improvement, translating in a subjective uh, perception of, of improvement. Now, um, to give you an idea, I mean, here, um, this process is continuing, obviously. 
I mean, the maximum time uh, is 30 seconds. Now I can tell you, I mean, um, doing a test here, you can maintain balance for three seconds or you can maintain balance for six or seven seconds. It may sound as a um, small difference, but actually it is already quite an important difference because what we essentially measure here is, okay, to what extent can your peripheral um, system, vestibular system, um, maintain, allow to maintain uh, balance here under pretty challenging conditions. So consider you close your eyes, consider you cross your arms, as you can see on the pictures, and to try to maintain balance on a soft uh, surface. And you will quickly figure out that um, it's not that easy. So do the test yourself and uh, you will figure out very quickly, I guess, that uh, a couple of seconds um, here can make a big difference, especially for people who start out with essentially zero um, just a few days after surgery where they lose um, one side of their peripheral vestibular system. Okay, great. That, yeah, that's, uh, that's very helpful. And then um, just moving to um, AM201, can you give a little more clarity on what the timing would be for, I guess, the IND filing and um, you know, initiation of a phase two? Yes, so since we have uh, here quite a few common elements between uh, 125 and 201, um, we are uh, seeking here the best way forward uh, to coordinate between these two uh, for the IND. Now, the 125 program here will um, complete enrollment as indicated uh, by the end of Q1 next year, and in the second quarter, we expect to have the data. With um, 201, what is the particularity here? We will need um, specific TOX data um, with beta histine and olanzapine given concomitantly. And so that will require here some extra testing in a TOX study. So we'll need to complete that and uh, coordinate that with uh, our AM125. So basically the 201 IND could um, happen earlier, so we have been guiding for Q1, but we will seek to um, have maximum synergies between the two programs. So the plan is uh, for both uh, programs well to um, start the next year uh, with the next uh, study phase. Okay, wonderful. Um, and then, you know, sorry to uh, make you guys repeat yourselves, but just uh, I want to make sure I have it correct on the um, you know, how, how much money was raised via the, the ATM and the equity line um, you know, during this period, and how, how, much do you, how much do you have remaining under those facilities? Okay, so as uh, Elmar mentioned, um, we have so far used uh, approximately 11% under the ATM. So the ATM in total, um, that's on file for 25 million, and we have uh, also about 11% of uh, the equity line, which is 10 million. So there is a, a lot of room uh, still left. Now in uh, the second half of the current year, um, as uh, Elmar mentioned, uh, we have uh, raised uh, 2.1 million um, under these uh, two instruments, and um, in addition, we, we had uh, this convertible loan uh, from 5T for Altamir Medica. And is that 2.1 million included in that 11% figure? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just want to make sure. Okay. Wonderful. That those are all my questions. You know. Uh, you know Thank you very much for taking them. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Once again, to those who wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one in your telephone. There are no further questions at this time. Please continue. 
Okay, thank you, operator, and uh, thanks to everyone for joining uh, today's call. Um, as always, uh, please remember, take care of your ears, and now I have to add, well, also of your nose. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. That does conclude our conference for today. Thank you all for participating. You may all disconnect.